Hi guys, welcome to our channel of Sciences and Mathematics. Today we are going to look at a concept in statistics, of course that's a branch of mathematics so that it deals with a collection and an analyzing of uh, large quantities of numerical data. But our main bias for today is going to be measures of central tendency and we are going to look at these three concepts of uh, this is typical values for probability distribution. That is for the concept of uh, the mid, median and mode. So without further ado, thank you and welcome. So as I've said, we are going to look at the, the concept uh, in statistics. And as I've said, this uh, concept is a measure, measures of central tendency. And under measures of central tendency, we are going to look at the concept of uh, Of course, we have other, <coughs> other typical values for probability distribution. That's apart from the mean, we have the median mode, which of course are part of the concept of central tendency. But we are specifically going to look at the mean as a measure of central tendency in our discussion. So in this case, before we go to our concept of uh, this mean, statistics, Statistics as a branch of mathematics, of course, as I've said, is a science or a mathematical concept or a branch of mathematics that deals with the collection, analyzing, and of course, trying to interpret numerical data, which is uh, in large quantities. So in this case, of course, I've talked about collection and then analyzing, and of course, interpreting. numerical data that appears or appears in large quantities. This numerical data can be either maybe grouped or ungrouped and group set of data. So in this case this is a, a procedure that is going to is going to is, is used especially for the purpose of inferring proportions from this whole set of data in order for one to come up with a conclusive result from that particular set of data. Now, statistics as a branch of mathematics <coughs> has a wide range of uh, applications, all the roles it plays in our day-to-day -day lives. So therefore, leaving the need for it to be looked into. So the first one is that statistics assist us to make informed decisions make informed decisions, especially when it comes to the concept of a business or commerce. A particular set of data or maybe a trend in business can assist us in making a decision, especially which pertains to finance and other areas in business. And secondly, it's going to assist us in trying to mitigate or maybe understand risks. standards, risks, and uh, therefore engage in emergency preparedness. Emergency preparedness either to mitigate or try to handle the risks which come by. So in this case, of course, statistics, if we take information from the natural occurrences or phenomena like the weather, this one assists us in following trends. Following trends, for example, in the weather patterns. So this one will assist us to try <coughs> and figure out on how we can be able to utilize this information for the purposes of our activities like agriculture, ETC. And therefore, we can also have another one. I mean that is statistics assist us to conduct research in trying to collect and compare different areas in order to interpret maybe a specific phenomenon. Now in this case of course it's going to assist us also to make predictions about the future and other areas. So these are some of the specific roles that we're going to see that uh, statistics as a branch of mathematics is going to come handy and assist us in trying to handle challenges and other areas.
experience that we come across in our day-to-day -day lives. So that one said and done, we've introduced another concept here. This is the concept of central tendency. Central tendency. And this case from this, this, this word central, this is a concept of uh, typical values for probability distribution. These are typical values Values of uh, probability distribution. Of course, in this set of data that we have <coughs> talked about, and this of course include the mean, the mode, and the median that we have talked about, or as well can be a measure of the or a statistical measurement that identifies a single value as a representative of the entire distribution. Of course. Uh, this one understand, assists us, so the measure of central value assists us understand the concept of grouped, grouped and ungrouped data that I've talked about. Therefore, it is significant <coughs> in trying to interpret a large, a large number of data. So, so, for that. so this is ungrouped. So it assists us understand a large quantity of groups grouped or ungrouped data in that case. So for the concept of the mean that we have talked about, <coughs> as we have said, <coughs> the mean refers to the, of course, the average, average value or the common value that appears in a set of grouped or ungrouped data. And therefore, we are going to see on how this particular mean a concept of the mean can be derived from a set of ungrouped or grouped data. So therefore, as I've said, basically we can find this one as an average. It's an average for the most common value. In a set of data. Which of course is referred to as the mean, or as I've said, as it falls under the three categories that we have mentioned of measures of central tendency, the mean, mid, and, and mod, we can define the mean as a measure of central tendency of probability distribution alongside the mean, median, and mod. Sometimes in some literature we can find that uh, this concept of the mean is being referred to as an expected value. So therefore, in case we come across this particular expression that is implying an ex expected value, then we are going to conclude that that one refers to the mean. Now, <clears throat> for us to try and understand this concept, I'm going to use uh, specific examples to try and illustrate what the concept of the mean means. Therefore, I'm going to give us a set of data that we are going to use for that purpose of trying to figure out what the concept of the mean refers to. So in this case, let me just give a set of data on the board so that we can be able to use it in order to derive the mean. So the first set of data, 7, 11, 11, this is 8, 12, 7, and then we have 6, 6. This is a set of data that is, has been arbitrarily collected from somewhere representing a particular information. So in this case, we're going to see that there are different terms that are going to be introduced. And in this case, we are going to denote the mean using that x bar. And then the number of this set of values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The number in which they appear irrespective of whether they are repetitive or just a single ones. And it is what is going to be referred to as n. So therefore, and we know from sciences and other aspects of mathematics, there's a symbol that we use, this a symbol for summation. So therefore, we are going to have an expression for representing the mean. This is the mean, and this is the number of values. And this is a summation, this is a total, total of all values that are being represented in that set of data. So therefore, <coughs> I'm going to give the 
expression that is going to refer to the mean. So therefore, the mean is given as this is a fraction of the that range of values, or maybe a division of that range of values, which I've said that it's going to be n. So for this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Therefore, our n for RAS is going to represent eight. And we are going to have a summation of those values from the first hive to the n number, which is, of course, I've given our n as 8. And this is the summation of all those values. So these values are going to be represented by x. That, of course, is appearing there. So <coughs> this uh, represents the values. And this is summation for all the values. This sign represents the summation total value several therefore we can say that it is x i to n that is the expression that we have given there for the mean so i'm going to find the mean for this so <clears throat> the mean x is given as x bar is given as 1 over 8 into 7 plus 11 plus 11 plus 8 plus 12 plus 7 plus 6 plus 6 so this is going to give us uh, 68 divided by 8, which is going to give us 8.5. So the calculation for this particular expression from, from the range of values that we have been given is going to give us 8.8. .8, and that one basically represents what we call our mean. So from a range of ungrouped data, we can be able to find our mean using this particular criteria. So what of a... Uh, a set of organized data that I've had mentioned before that is uh, can be of either organized or grouped or ungrouped data. So for a set of organized data, we are going to see that there's a different way in which we're going to find the mean. And I'm going to give an example of that using this sample question. Right? Suppose we have a set of uh, organized data. And remember, we, we, we're going to use this one to refer to frequency. So therefore, <coughs> let's look at this set of values that we have here. This is for the f representing the value, f for frequency. This is x for the value, f for frequency, and fx as a product of the value and the frequency. So we have this set of data that I'm going to write here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then for this frequency, 1 appears 8 times, so we have 8. That refers to the frequency. The number in which a value is repeating is therefore appearing 7, 12, 3, 1. So this one coincides with this horizontal. So the product between this one and this one is going to give us 8, 28. And then we have 21, 48. For this and this, the product between those two, 15, and then 6. So therefore, we've mentioned that we're going to find our mean using the summation of the frequency, the, pro the summation of the, the product of frequency times the values, and then divided by the frequency, so the total frequency. So that one is given as that. So therefore, if we try to find the summation of this particular column, the total here is going to give us of course, uh, 126 divided by 45. So therefore, this is what is going to give us. And the value for that is going to be, of course, uh, 2.8. So therefore, 2.8 is going to be our mean from this set of values that we have organized in, in this tabular form. So I'm going to give a range for data that is an organized kind of data, but I'm going to give a, 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 another example for group data, whereby, of course, we are determined, we were, we're supposed to use this range of x, so we are going to find out that instead of this data, x appearing as 1, it's maybe a range of data or a class of data that is ranging from 1 to 5, maybe 6 to 10, etc. So <coughs> we're going to introduce a new concept of, known as a midpoint that we're going to use in order to try and find out the mean from such a kind of a range of data. So for that case, I'm going to give use a table for illustration, and then it's going to assist us in finding our mean.
Nasaf said, if the data is grouped, of course, we are going to use a different concept that is the midpoint. And uh, that is going to assist us <coughs> find the mean for, <coughs> sorry for that. We're going to use this midpoint and that is going to assist us to find the mean for such a kind of, of course, numerical values or the data which has been grouped. So therefore, this is going to, or is going to, <coughs> to assist us in finding the mean. And this, the midpoint is going to assist us, of course, in trying to find a representative data from the rows cost. So therefore, as we said, our mean is given as the summation of FIX and then the summation of frequency. That is a from, of course, I to N, I to N, I to N. But in this case, if we have a class which is represented as that, as that then we are going to find the mean, of course, using do these two different sets of data. That is the summation for the X, which is the midpoint, and then the summation of the frequency Fx. So how do we find the midpoint? Now, for instance, for the first set or a class of data that's between 1 to 10, the midpoint is going to be this 10. This is, a, of course, a just, just for a range of numbers, especially for the first class of data that we have, we can just arbitrarily just list the values that are contained in there. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. This is small, so I use this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So at this particular point, we have five values at this point and another one. So for this case, uh, the values that is going to be a midpoint for us is 5.5. And that now with these respective values, those are the values that are computed in this particular column. So in this case, we are going to, uh, as it appears from this, we are going to use this uh, one to represent as I've said the row scores for that column. Therefore, the summation for the first one here is going to be 1980. And then the summation for the second one, that is the summation for frequency. This is the F column. Of course, it's going to be Summation for frequency is going to be 40. So bear in mind that this is the product between this one and this one. And this one is a new concept that we have said we use it to represent the data for that particular class that we have called the midpoint. Therefore, our mean for this is going to be 1980 divided by 40, which is going to give us 49.5. I hope I've done my calculations right. So, so this is two. This is a 9.99. Okay, that's correct. So our midpoint, uh, I mean our mean for that is going to be 49.5 for that set of uh, data which has been given as a class. So in this case, this is the approach that we're going to use uh, in treatment of this specific range of data. That is for, of course, for group data. For group data, we are going to use the concept that we have already discussed. So this is how we are going to use uh, these two particular concepts in finding this measure of central tendency that we call the mean. And maybe in other cases whereby we may find that there are new concepts which have been introduced. We of course refer to this one and try to compare it to what may have come up. So in that case, that is it for today. So thank you guys. Subscribe to our channel for more and uh, so that we can be able to share information and discuss on other areas in sciences and mathematics. So for that, bye. God bless you.